Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you guys are having, or you've had a good week so far. I hope you're having a wonderful day, a blessed day, a prosperous day. And um, I wanted to get into this lesson that the Lord gave to me to share with you all today. It is entitled Holiness. Who does that? Holiness. Who does that? And as you know that nowadays, you know, we don't hear too much about holiness being preached. We don't hear a lot about, uh, you know, the, the contents of, of holiness and living a righteous life being preached. We get a lot of grace cards and mercy cards and kindness cards. And while God is a God of kindness, we also know, and he's a God of mercy, he's also a God of severity. The Bible does talk about the wages of sin the consequences of sin, um, that, you know, without holiness, you're not going to see God. But a lot of times these things are being glossed over and almost as if it's no longer, as if it no longer holds a relevance. So what I'm going to do is share with you the scriptures that the Lord gave me this morning and we'll go from there. So I'm going to put on my glasses today. <laughs> I don't want to, but okay. So the scripture that I am going to share with you is going to be 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read 13 through 16. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end, for the grace that shall, uh, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. All right. So here, as it's saying, you know, we have to gird up the loins of our mind, gird up. We've got to hold fast and we've got to keep our minds completely, completely fixed and stayed on God. And how are you going to do that? You are going to be able to do that because God, um, the more that God, Jesus reveals himself to you, the more you spend time in his presence, the more, the very, the, at the very least, we know that we can go to God and we can pray to God. And when you go to him and you pray to him, as Jesus is revealed to you, why is that not so shiny? As Jesus is revealed to you, as as you spend time with him and he reveals himself to you, then you are going to be able, only then will you be able, through the power of the Holy Spirit, be able to gird up the loins of your mind, okay? And what you're going to do is, the idea is that we're no longer walking according to the flesh. That's why it said in verse 15, saying, um, 14, that says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. There's a lot of things that people are doing um, walking in darkness because they're not aware of certain things. You know, you're ignorant to a lot of things. You're ignorant to what the word says. You know part of the word, but not all of the word. And a lot of this stuff, um, a lot of people think that they're saved, they're Christians, they're fine, we're good, but due to your ignorance, and ignorance comes from your mind is darkened because you don't know, um, you are not able to walk the, the walk that path of holiness that God requires of us. You cannot do it in your flesh. I cannot do it in my flesh. In our own, it's not a mindset. Oh, I'm going to do this. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. So it is very important that you are given the Lord time. You're getting in His presence so that Jesus Christ can be revealed more and more to you. There's more than just. There's more to Jesus than. Oh well, He died on the cross for my sins and He raised. He was raised from the dead. I believe it. You know, I go to church and I'm good and I read my Bible from time to time and I listen to my uh, gospel music in the car and I'm a good person and I give my tithes and offering. No, there's more to it than that. You, okay, you accepted him, but now you have to spend time in the presence of the Lord 
through prayer, things of that nature, just at the very least submitting yourself and saying, God, I want to know you. Teach me and show me how to get to know you more. And when you do those things, Jesus Christ will begin to manifest himself to you. In doing so, you will become aware of what you're doing. You will no longer walk in ignorance. You'll be able to see certain things and know that, okay, I can't walk this way. I can't do these things anymore. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, he can change you. Okay? So I encourage you to read 1 Peter chapter 1, 13 through 16 on your own. The other thing that I'm, as I said here, in 16, it says... Um, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. Okay. So I'm going to show you where that scripture is and we're going to go here into Leviticus, the book of Leviticus. Um, it's the third book in the Bible, Leviticus chapter 11, and it's going to be 44. So in this particular scripture, the Lord is talking to in the scripture, God is telling the people all the things that they should not eat, should not touch, should not handle. And, um, you know, things that, that were considered unclean and that would make them unclean. And so what he basically says to them here, and it's actually an interesting chapter to read on your own, but I'm going to show you here. In Leviticus 11 verse 44 where it says for I am the Lord your God ye shall therefore for I am the Lord your God ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy for I am holy it goes it goes a little further but I wanted to tell you there you shall thank therefore sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy for I am holy okay that was God now, some people may say, well, that's old. That's back in Leviticus. So I'm going to show you something in Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3 and 6 says, Malachi ch chapter 3, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. For I am the Lord, I change not. So it's not, oh, well, it was whole, old school when he says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Jesus does not change. God does not change. So that uh, requirement for holiness still stands. Okay? Malachi chapter 3. You can read that 3 and 6. All right? I encourage you also... Oh, and let me go to Matthew chapter 5, 27 and 28, 27 through 30. Okay, in Matthew chapter 5, this was where Jesus was doing some teaching to the disciples. And what he says here is, you have heard that it was said, it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, he hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that thy whole body should not be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Okay, so let me read the first verse because I skipped something. And if thy right hand offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And then it says, if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should perish in hell, should be cast into hell. All right. So I read a lot of things to you. I said a whole lot of things to you. Okay. We talked about the scripture um, in 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16. And basically is telling you to be holy. Be holy for I am holy. We know God says, be holy for I am holy. We went to find that scripture 
um, in Leviticus 11 and 4, beginning at 44, where God specifically says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. We went to Malachi chapter 3 and 6, where it says, For I am the Lord, I change not. So therefore, his requirement of holiness has not changed. And then I also went and read to you here where God was, where Jesus was teaching the disciples. And one of the things he was talking about was, if you're right, you know, not looking, not to commit adultery, but also if you look on a woman to lust after her. I think the same goes for us too as women. If we look at, look at a man to lust after her, we have already committed adultery with that person in our heart, okay? And so here it is that the Lord is saying here, if your, um, your right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it away from me because it's better that that eye, that one member be cast into, um, be cast away and cast away into hell than for your whole body to perish. And the same thing, if your right hand offended, cut it off. And it, it's better for one member to perish than for your whole body to perish. So what does that mean? Are we literally plucking our eyes out and our our hands off? No, that is not what that means at all. But what how this is tying into worship and how God, uh, I mean, into holiness and how God showed me this is number one, you should have that tenacity. You should have that sort of urgency and that sort of drive that, you know what, in order for me to be holy, whatever it is that causes me to be an offense to God or what causes me to go in a way that is, um, going a path of unholiness that means that i am delving into uh, whatever causes me to entertain my flesh and to do things that is that's that are unholy and unrighteous then you need to have this tenacity and this determination that you are going to cut that thing off get away from it cast it away from you you know holiness is something I, oh I also want you guys to go and read Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 through 26 read that on your own and it talks about the fruits of the spirit and the works of the flesh and the difference in that you know holiness is something that most people are gonna kind of turn away from because they feel like it's impossible this is like a death sentence that we put on someone it's bondage but holiness is a requirement from the Lord. God is a God of light. There is no darkness in him at all. And if we say that we are walking in the light and we are the light and yet we're walking in darkness, the word of God says that we lie and the truth is not in us. So how is it that we in our frail state can live a holy life? It is by getting in the presence of the Lord. It is by praying. It is by being vigilant in what it is that you're beholding, what it is that you're handling. As it says with your right eye, if your right eye affect offend thee, what are you looking at? What are you allowing to be set before you? Because your eyes are the windows of the soul. Whatever your eye look at, it's going to go down in your spirit. You have to be aware of what you're looking at, what it is that you're listening to. What are you speaking? Okay. What are you meditating on? That is what, this is the way that you can maintain and retain your holiness. And it, and, and how are you going to do this? You're going to do this by you being, you spending time in the presence of God. You going to God and say, Lord, help me on my walk. God help me. And once the Lord, once you do that and you're doing that from a pure heart, he's going to come and he's going to clean you up and he's going to help you. He's going to send you a helper, which is the Holy Spirit that can help you to make that walk. It's going to trust holiness is going to change everything about you. Let me show you something that I read. Um, I can't remember who, what uh, particular material I was reading. It was a long time ago, but it says, You are holy to the extent that your life is devoted to Him, that's Jesus Christ, and your actions reflect His character. You are holy to the extent that your life is devoted to him, the Lord Jesus, God, and your actions reflect his character. Does your action reflect his character? Are you devoted to God? Not in words, not in works. 
You have to be vigilant. You have to be aware. When you get in the presence of the Lord and he talks to you, he teaches you, he'll, he'll show you step by step. And the more you spend time in his presence, the more your nature will change. Your habits will change. Your strongholds will begin to uh, diminish the things, your habits, your inclinations will change. But you have God to be able, you have to make yourself available to God. And God will begin to show you the things that you probably shouldn't be looking at, the things that you shouldn't be listening to. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to stop. No, you're trying to do this through the works of your flesh, and that's not going to work. Because your your flesh cannot, sub, can, cannot be subject itself to God. It just can't. When you're trying to do it through your own means, and, and you become discouraged. So what you have to do is through the Spirit, allow the Lord to change you by saying, God, I bring myself to you as obedient children. That means you just come as a child. You know how your kids, they're there, they depend on you for everything. They're little kids. They just depend on you. They trust you. They're coming to you. They know that you're going to you know, fix their bath water. You're going to set up their clothes. They trust you. They put it on. They just <laughs> go along, you know? So it is the same thing here, being holy. Guarding the gates of your eyes, what you're listening to, and when, because what you put in is what is going to come out. You know, if you eat a lot of junk food and you eat a lot of stuff, it's going to manifest. It's going to manifest in your body. It's going to manifest probably in your skin and um, your, your overall health because what's on the inside is going to come out on the outside. You're going to find it's going to be harder for you to run. If you do that, going up a flight of stairs is going to be hard for you because you're eating a lot of junk, okay? And your body's going to want it. What you feed it is what it's going to want and it's going to desire. And it's the same thing. And when you start to scale back and you say, okay, I'm going to start eating healthy, your body goes through this moment where, you know, it's withdrawals. It wants what it wants. So it is the same thing when you're trying to walk in the spirit. Your flesh is not going to like it. Your nature is not going to like it. Those things that you used to do, you're going to want to do. It's on autopilot. So what I want you to know is that holiness is not a thing of the past. Holiness is not some old school thing that people are trying to bring in to hold people in bondage. The only reason why you think it's bondage is because it's not what you want to do. It doesn't feel good. Um, me personally, there's just a lot of things that the Lord showed me. I thought that, okay, if I'm going to church, I'm okay, you know, and I felt if I'm just with one guy, then there's nothing wrong with, you know, um, sex before marriage um, because I'm in a committed relationship. Well, that was not the case. I don't bother people. I love to drink, you know, have my wine. That was my thing. When I was partying, when I was a party girl, you know, my thing is I'm going to get my Long Island and, you know, do me. I didn't think I was doing anything wrong because I wasn't having any one night stands. I'm not sleeping around. I'm not in the club acting up. It's just me and my homegirls chilling, doing our thing. We go home. I didn't think there was anything wrong with that. But um, being a Christian, though, I just felt that the basics were enough. If I go to church, I give my tithes and offering, and I'm not, you know, I'm a good person. But God wants holiness. Holiness is living a clean life before God. You you emulate His character. You 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 desire what He desires. You're grieved by what He is grieved by, and that's only going to happen when His Holy Spirit comes in and changes you. So there are things that I had to change. I had to change what I look at, and it wasn't me going, "Okay, I'm going to stop this." As I spent time in the presence of the Lord, He began to change my desires. Being a person that, you know, was sexually active at some point, um, those desires are suppressed. How do they stay suppressed, though? It's not just a one-time thing. They have to guard the, the, the gateway of my eyes. I'm not going to watch certain TV shows. I'm not going to watch stuff with steamy love scenes. I'm not going to watch, you know, things where people are butt naked and having sex. I can't do that. There's certain things I don't listen to. Certain songs and music, I don't listen to those things. Drinking, you know, I've talked about it before. I don't drink anymore. I remember when the Lord first dropped it in my spirit that I shouldn't be drinking. And I was kind of sad about it. I was like, but why? You know, I just have wine. I'm not drinking any hard liquor, Lord. I'm not, you know, clubbing. I'm just, you know, 
having a, a glass of wine at home and what's wrong with it? Well, what the Lord showed me is that where he's taking me and what he's going to be doing in my life and the call that he has for me, I cannot drink. And one of the things that he shared with me about drinking was, and if we really think about it, when you have that drink, whatever it is, let's say you drink every now and then, isn't it the feeling that you get from that drink, the reason why you drink? Even if you're not allowing yourself to get drunk, isn't it the, what you like about it is the way it makes you feel? It actually tickles the flesh. The flesh enjoys that. And that's what God told me. It The feeling that we have, even if you're not drunk, is because you are in a semi or partially altered state. Your mind is being affected by that drink. And what God told me for Arlene the way that I'm taking you and the walk and the path that I'm taking you on, your mind cannot be altered, not even a little bit, because that is what alcohol does. Now, to what degree and how much you drink is how you're going to, you can end up stumbling drunk, peeing on yourself and just, you know, humiliating yourself. But the bottom line is, even if you're just taking one sip or one glass, why you enjoy that drink is because of how that drink is making you feel and you're being impaired. That's impairment. Even if it's just a little bit, you like it. You like that it relaxes you. You're being impaired. And God is like, you can never be impaired. You, Arlene, cannot be. Not only that, one of the areas in which the Lord is dealing with me is in the area of the prophetic. And so, that is a gift and something that he's building up in me, the gift of the prophetic. So he told me in that your vessel must be clean. You can never be in an altered state. You can have no strong drink, no wine. And I was sad. I really was. I was like, it feels like you're taking everything from me, Jesus. I mean, can you work with a sister? <laughs> but you know what? I obeyed him. I poured everything out. <laughs> I had a lot of little pictures around my house um, with a little wine thing. You know how they have the little wines he got me, he told me to get rid of that. He started off with a wine first and then he had me do that um, eventually because he's like, it's a message subliminally. Even though you're looking at it, it's just my clock with a wine glass on it. He's like, he had me, you know, kind of put those things away. And then I got rid of all my little frozen daiquiris. You know, the ones that you can get at the store. You just twist it off and you can just pour it in a glass. All of those things he had me get rid of. And I have had no desire for it. So when I go out, I will get a virgin daiquiri. I get anything that I want. It's a virgin. And at first it was a struggle because I was like, you know, I don't taste nothing. But I'm fine and I don't have the desire for it. I can literally go in the store and I don't think about it, but you know, I don't spend my time going down the liquor aisle either, but I don't have that desire. So all I'm telling you guys is whatever it is, whether it's alcohol, sex, smoking, anger, whatever it is, God is going to allow you, God is going to help you. When you obey him, he will take those desires from you. He'll change your speech. He'll change the way you look at things, the way you handle people. And it's not that you're going to be perfect, but the minute you do it, it's going to be of such a discomfort. You're going to be so aware of it that you just want, you, you will quickly get yourself right with God. Lord, forgive me. Help me not to do that again. It will be as sand in your eye, like an eyelash in your eye. Sexual immorality, it is the same thing. Stay away from things like that. You know, as it says, if your right eye, if your eye offend you, pluck it out, cast it away from you. If your right hand offend you, pluck it off, cut it off, throw it away. It does not mean literally, but it means staying away from those things. Cutting those things off. Going cold turkey. Stay away from that. Stop texting and talking to that person that you know is your Achilles heel. Don't watch those things. 
You have to be, you've got to be just rogue about it. I will not be as Joseph who ran in the other direction from Potiphar's wife, ran and left his coat in her hand. And if you're making those efforts, the Lord would help you. Holiness is a requirement. It cannot be light and dark. I uh, gave this analogy of a dirty guy. Of a, first of all, you're not going to drink out of a dirty cup. Most of us won't. You're not going to drink out of a glass. If someone brings you a glass of water and has just, just a speck of hair, you ain't going to swipe the hair out and drink it. You, can, you want another glass. So God wants us to be clean vessels. And the reason why it's important that we are clean vessels is because we need to be... Um, we need to allow ourselves, our vessels, to be a living sacrifice so that we can hear him clearly, so that we are effective in reaching people in the world. People will look at you, and before they know that you're a Christian, they're going to be like, there's something about him, there's something about her, and they, they want to know. And by your speech, just like with Peter, when he was trying to, den he was he denied Jesus to say, your speech betrays you, you are one of the disciples. And of course, he started cussing and swearing so that they wouldn't be able to figure, you know, know that he was with Jesus. But your speech, your mannerisms will cause people to say, what is it, what is it about you? They will want to kind of tailor their behavior. They won't curse as much. They may not even know why before you say, you're Christian because of the Holy Spirit that is in you and your life is absolutely um, exemplifying Christ. I'm sorry, holiness is going to change the way you look on the outside. It's going to change the clothes that you wear. It's going to change your mannerisms, your speech. You can't walk in, in pride if you're walking in holiness. You're not going to go and hurt people and when you, if you do it, the Holy Spirit is going to quicken you. You're going, oh my gosh, I was wrong. And you're going to want to make it right. The, here's the last thing I'll say. Without holiness, no one shall see God. And that should be enough for you to want to be holy. Being holy is not you dressing crazy and looking ashy and you're condemning people and you think you're better than people. That is not holiness. That's the other H called hypocrisy. Holiness is going to cause you to begin to exhibit and practice the fruit of the spirit. Holiness will cause you to love. Holiness is going to cause you to love your brothers and sisters, to forgive them, to understand Holiness is not being laid back. It's not being docile or docile. It's not being a doormat for anybody. But it, what it does, it, it causes you just considered holiness to be physically fit in Christ. You're fit. And what it allows you to do is to be an example, to be um, a fit soldier in the army of the Lord and being able to bring people by your holiness is how you're going to reach people. And that you can hear God clearly. To hear, his, to hear his instructions. To do the things that he needs to do. And to hear him so he can continue to perfect you. So that we are fit to be called his children. And ultimately, to make it into heaven. Alright guys, this video is going on longer than I intended. But just remember that. Be ye holy for I am holy, said the Lord. It's not a thing of the past. It's a very thing. It's always been. It's a thing of the present. It's a thing of eternity. So get to know him, guys. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.